is Sean McClure with BJPenn.com, and I am talking to Strike Force standout Josh Thompson. Josh, how are you? I'm doing good, man. Everything's been good. Uh, just been traveling a lot, you know, with the guys. Uh, Tyson, I was on with Tyson Griffiths right out in uh, Vegas for him. And then I uh, spent a week there with him, and then I left straight from there to South Dakota. Spent some time out with Gray Maynard and Luke Rockhold in South Dakota. And then um, then I, we, we ended up flying down straight from there to Arizona to meet up with C. Uh, Dalloway, Ryan Bader, and Aaron Simpson. And we all decided to catch up for one of the charity events that Bader was throwing for Wounded Warriors. Uh, we did that event, and then uh, the next day we decided to catch the NASCAR. And so uh, an American ethanol uh, brought us in and took care of us there and, uh, you know, made sure that, you know, we had good seats and good passes and got to check out all the, meet all the drivers and hang out. You know, it was an awesome experience. So it's been busy the last three weeks traveling, but, um, man, I wouldn't change it for anything, man. It's a great, great job and a great experience. So I asked Luke, I'm going to ask you the same thing. When you heard that Strike Force was closing its, door, its doors or potentially closing its doors, what was your initial emotion? You know, it's, it's like bittersweet, you know, it's like, I mean, I'm one of the originals, like, Luke came after I was there, and like, and I don't want, I mean, I'm not trying to knock anybody, I'm just saying, like, you know, I was there when we first started the company, and, you know, when I met with Scott Coker, and, you know, and, and uh, you know, and the other guys I met, Conley, Frank Shamrock, Gilbert, you know, we met with Coker, like, before he even thought, you know, when he was just in the works of talking about making Strikeforce an MMA company, you know, and, um, Said, hey, you know, I want to, you know, want to try and build this off of you guys. And I said, you know, and we, we already had, you know, Gilbert was a new up and comer. I had already fought in the UFC and in Pride, and you know, and I had kind of a little bit of a, a name and a fan, obviously a fan base in San Jose. And so Coker just said, you know, hey, obviously the goal is to have you and Gil fight each other, you know, and um, and uh, you know, but I want to build it around you guys, you know, and you guys being, you know, the top guys. And uh, and I've obviously Frank and Colin, you know, what happened there, and. We obviously know that with me and Gil, so I think it was, I think it's bittersweet, but I saw the vision that Coker had, and, you know, and, um, you know, and obviously it played out pretty well to the point where, you know, a company like, you know, the UFC wanted to buy it, so I think it was a great, I think it's been a great experience, and uh, it was a great ride, you know, and uh, the fact that it's coming to a close, like I said, it's a little bittersweet, but now that it's done, and we know that it's done, and you know, it's just time to move on, man. I mean, now I you know, like, now there's no more this back and forth, not trying to figure out what's going on with your job, you know, and if it's done, it's done, and we're moving on, or, you know, we'll be in the UFC, and, um, you know, you know, hopefully we'll be kicking ass and taking names, that kind of thing, so it'll be a great experience. I'm, it'll be nice. For me, it's like coming back home, you know what I mean? That was the first huge organization I signed with, and, uh, you know, and Davis saw me fighting in Hawaii, and, you know, and just said, hey, you know, welcome to the UFC, and I was like, man... If you could ask her to meet, you know, the president at the time, you know, he was the president, of, you know, and uh, still is obviously, but I mean, like, he was the, the one that was handling, like, one-on-one -on -one experiences with the fighters, and uh, at that moment, when he, you know, I met with him in the lobby, I was like, hey, you know, you're welcome to the UFC, and I was like, man, thanks, so I got home, I got home from Hawaii, I stayed there extra couple of days, and uh, when I got home from Hawaii, there was already a... Uh, boxes of clothes and everything in my house letting me know like hey you know welcome and uh you know and it was a great experience and I, I, I you know I, I would have never left the UFC to begin with I mean had they not got rid of the weight class you know back in the day you know I, I feel like I'd still be with them I feel like I'd still be one of the guys that you know uh helped get it off the ground I guess you know I mean I feel like I would have been one of those guys and um the fact of the matter is that you know they got rid of the vision and I had to find I had to find work you know I had to go somewhere else and you know, and um, you know, and Coker came to me with this a great, uh, I, this great vision and this great plan, and so I jumped on the bandwagon, and you know, and we're at this is where we are now, and uh, you know, it's like you just learn to deal with it, you know, and to move on, and I'm looking forward to getting the UFC and uh, and you know, seeing what I can do there. Yeah, that's what uh, Pedro, our editor, I was talking to him, and you know, you're one of those guys, Josh, that we both agreed that there's, it seems like the UFC would have an open door if Josh Thompson called. Dana would say, yeah, we have a spot for you. Do you think it's that way? Uh, I mean, I would hope so. I mean, because I just pre-signed a six-fight deal knowing that part of the deal was negotiated for me when I went into the UFC. So <laughs> I think I would assume that I would have a spot. But I mean, you know, like, hey, you're only going to do your last fight. And right now, you know, I mean, I lost my last fight. You know, no matter how many people tell me I won and no matter how many people said the judges were wrong, no matter how you look at it, you know, for someone who... 
people thought, you know, I wasn't even ranked in the top 20. All of a sudden, I was fighting the number one guy in the world who was arguably the number one guy in the world, and everyone thought I beat him. So, it's a, I would hope so I'd have a fight on a spot there. You know, that was just up to me to, to go in there and produce and, you know, and get back to my winning ways and, uh, you know, and do what I can. You know, that's the best thing I can do, man. I can't, you can't, you can't let all this, all this strength force and all the UFC and all the other stuff get in the way. I got to go out there and do my job and, Doing my job means I gotta be the best, you know. And so I'm excited to get in there, and you know. And obviously, I think it's it's just nice to also know that there's 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 so many people to fight, <laughs> you know. Right. I mean, there's there's it, that's, there's a handful of people to fight. That you know, I mean, from Pettis to Benson to you know, if if they sign Eddie, Eddie obviously, and you know, whoever else, uh, Dan Miller, any, anybody, you know, there's a whole handful of guys that are at the top of the food chain over there, and uh, just you know, just uh, biting at the bit to get to get in there and fight with guys like Gil and myself and Demazadol and you know and uh, Will Cox and you know the guys you know that are here in Strike Force. So I think it's just a nice change of pace because it's something they haven't seen, you know. <laughs> The only difference would be is like it kind of feels like you know our home you know is has been closed down and so now we're going into like kind of their territory and their home and I think for the first fight or so like you saw with you know the guys that came over from Pride you know they had a hard time you know adapting I think to the energy and all the stuff that goes on you know coming into the UFC and so like I said I, I've had a plan in my mind and my and the focus in my mind like hey. You know, when I get there, that you know, I need to kind of explode on the scene. I need to be, I need to make sure that I come in there with a win and I don't have a shitty performance. And you know, I need to make sure that you know, whoever they put in front of me, that you know, I make an example out of them. That that, I, that I'm a lightweight to be reckoned with, and that you know, I need to go out there, and stamp my, you know, stamp my my name all over this guy. So whoever it is, you know, I need to go out there and show that I'm I'm, I'm a top lightweight. I need to make sure that I'm already in the talk of of a title hunt. You know, as soon as I get in there. So that, that's my goal, and that's that's what. I'm looking to achieve. I think stylistically, I match up with every single guy they have in there, you know. And so, uh, you know, some of the guys from Strike Force, you know, aren't as well rounded. I don't believe, you know. And so they're gonna have a harder time, I think, going in there with the guys that are there. But I'm looking forward to what I can show and do over there. Well, I, I can already hear Bruce Buffer saying, "Josh Thompson is a freestyle fighter." <laughs> you know, I, I can already hear it. So, well, let's talk about you know Strike Force closing its doors. Now there are women in the UFC, and you've been around MMA a long time. Did you ever think that would happen? I mean, you know, if there's a market for it, I mean, you know, the UFC would be full enough to, to, to do it. But I think the fact that there is a market around that weight class of 135, 145, I would say more 135 than Ronda's in. I mean, it's because there's women at that size, and that size of women, you know, there's a lot of them out there that want to fight. And so... I think that the fact that Ronda is so marketable um, from the, you know, just being in the Olympics, also from, you know, she's, she, uh, she's a pretty girl and she's very aggressive and, you know, and I, I think that she falls right into the UFC style of, like, you know, trash talking, you know, as far as her style. And it comes natural to her and I think it's easy for her to go out and, uh, and, and um, you know, and just... And just the way she comes across, I think it's easy for her to, to show that, show the world that she's marketable, and I think that's what she does really well. From being good looking to to being a great, to being a good fighter, and being a good jiu-jitsu player and judo player and jiu-jitsu player. I mean, I think that um, you know she doesn't just she doesn't just go out there and you know and lay on people and try and slowly pass, and she works for finish, for finish, for finish. You know, she's. She's always trying to get to, to the end, and the end result is to take your arm along with her. And she's done a pretty good job of that, I think. So. Hats off to her. I think another thing that's happening right now is I think uh, the, the UFC heavyweight division has been put on notice that Daniel Cormier is, is coming over. Would you agree? <laughs> well, let me just tell you, if they don't know, they're going to know soon enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, just watching him and Kane, you know, spar every day and be ready and, you know, and, uh, and I, I see it. I see it every day. And, I mean, just to see the two of them growing as fighters together in both areas, you know, it's it's uh, it's phenomenal. You know, I think Kane offers the stand-up and the wrestling as well. But, I mean, he's you know, a the level of wrestler. But I think the two of them just feed and, and, and feed the fuel of each other. And it just it, you can just watch it in sparring and they get better and they get more relaxed. And then, you know, but they, they really know how to push each other. And it's like, hey, I'm not letting you get the takedown. Hey, I'm not letting you land that. And, you know, and if you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. And, you know, if you kick me, I'm going to kick you back. So the, it's a, it's a one-up game, you know. And I think that that's... 
that is what you need in gyms where you have two top guys. You know, I feel like I get that right now with, you know, in, in the gym at AK with, with uh, Gray. You know, I got Gray Maynard, I got Tyson, you know, I, you know, I had Wilcox, you know, and he's at home for the holidays and uh, hopefully coming back soon. And, um, you know, it's just uh, I have those guys there that help push me, help get me ready. And, uh, you know, when you know you're rolling with somebody that's good and it's, it's, it's one of the top talents, it's like – you don't want to let them get the one up because that's how it can snowball in a real fight. You know, you let somebody get, you know, you land a couple of shots and, you know, or they get a couple of takedowns, it starts snowballing from there. You need to start, you know, to keep the ball in your court and you need to keep the momentum rolling in your, on your side. And uh, and I like watching them spar when they do it. I feel like I, we try to do the same thing too with, you know, with um, with Gray and with Tyson. And it's like, you know, you don't want to be outdone even though they're your teammates, you know, but in a real fight, you got to step up and make sure that you're not getting outdone and you're not getting outworked. Well, you realize that if all the if all you guys go to the UFC, you're pretty much the new lions. Then you know they're, they're, you'll have like a serious like an, a mafia over there of like all AKA guys. I mean, the number of AKA guys will be ridiculous in the UFC. And I think you know, like everybody knows, you know, Greg Jackson. Everybody knows AKA. But I think I actually truly believe that heads are going to turn when Luke, you, you name it. Daniel, everybody goes to the UFC, and you guys start doing your thing. I would say that a lot of people are going to wake up. Well, people don't understand is that, like, GSP went to Greg Jackson after he was good. You know, I mean, John Jones, they went, they they weren't built there at those places. You know, they were athletes and did things, you know, and they were fighting before they went there. Like, the guys that walked into our gym, and, like, and I'm going to use Kasha as an example, and Daniel Cormier, they walked off the wrestling mat and walked right into our gym and never thrown a punch before in their life, except for, like, you know, mishaps on the street. You know what I mean? Like, they, they, didn't, know, they didn't know what it was to hit a knee bar or hit a submission, you know? We, we took, not just we, just, I mean, the team, a.k.a., and they took those guys and they made them, you know? I mean, don't get me wrong, they put the work in and stuff, but it's just... The team itself helped build these guys to make them to make them great fighters. And I'm not just talking about DC. I'm talking. We have a new guy named Sean Bunch. Came right off the wrestling match. He's fighting the Bellator coming up, and you know, uh, next week. And uh, we're really looking forward to him. You know, having a good a good fight. You know, and um, it's just we have a lot of guys that it, they didn't they didn't they didn't train anywhere else or do anything else. They just came to us and we built them from the beginning. You know, Fitch, same thing. You know, John Fitch had like one or two fights before he came, but he was real green. You know, and Nate Moore, same thing. Like, we have good guys in our gym. But what people don't understand is that we didn't get them when they were already good. You know, we built a team around them. You know, we we built this team together as a unit, and we feed off of each other and try to make each other better. And, um, you know, and I think that's why we're so good. So it's just a matter of time before we hit – to the level where we're all champions again. You know what I mean? Like, Luke's got a title. I had the title. DC just won the heavyweight title. Kane had the UFC title. It's just we're right there. We just need to we need to get that, that moment. You know, we're going to be like the, the old Militich camp where they, you know, all of them had the champion. You know, and all of them had titles, you know, from Jens to Matt Hughes to Pat, you know, to so on, you know. And, um, you know, I think that boy, I think we're right there. You know, from Kane and DC having the heavyweight title, Luke having the the middleweight title, and you know, and myself having you know Fitch or or Swick having the welterweight title, and myself having the uh, you know or Gray, you know, having the uh, lightweight title. And, you know, we don't really have a lot of smaller guys than me, but um, you know, we do have one new guy that's coming up, and it'd be nice to get him going. And uh, he's just real green and just walked off the wrestling mat at you know at uh, Baker from Bakersfield, so he's he's gonna be with us full time now. And I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what our guys can do. So once we get in there.